Hello, my name is Ashley and I'm the Technology Education Librarian here at Virginia Beach Public Library. And this video is part of our Camp Evergreen series, which is about making cool things, earning badges, and discovering new skills. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the photo digitization kit that is part of VBPL's Take Home Tech offerings, where you can bring home cool tech with your library card. Advancements in technology have turned digitizing your cherished photos and important documents into a very simple process. There are many reasons to digitize your photos and documents. One of the biggest is to have a copy in the unfortunate event of damage. Many people have lost precious memories due to fire, flood, or other disasters. By scanning these photos and documents, you will still have access to them in the worst case scenario of property damage or loss. There are also practical uses for digitizing your photos and documents. It allows you to be more organized and easily access all your items in one location. Digital photos are easier to share with friends and family. You can also edit photos to fix discoloration, scratches, or folds, then reprint them to keep your photos looking their best. Ready to see how easy it is to scan your photos and documents? Okay, let's get started. To begin, let's make sure we have everything we need. The first step is to check out a photo digitization kit from your local VBPL branch using a full service library account. You will also need to provide three AA batteries. Now let's get the scanner out of the kit. When you open the case, you will see the scanner, a USB cable to connect the scanner to your computer, an instruction manual, and a little air duster shaped like a rocket. This is good for removing dust particles from your scanner and the photos. Once you have removed the scanner from the case, go ahead and insert your AA batteries. Once you've inserted your AA batteries, it's time to turn the scanner on. Hold down the power button until the screen lights up with the words direct scan. It will show a screen with a graphic of an SD card for a few seconds and then go to the main screen. Here you will see the time in the upper left hand corner. Since it resets every time you replace the batteries, it will almost always be incorrect. The number next to it is how many documents and photos you currently have saved on the micro SD card. Again, if you are just starting, it should say zero. Underneath that is a little lock and a folder. If the lock is green, that means your images are not encrypted. If it is red, that means they are encrypted. If you choose to encrypt your files, you will only be able to read them with the memory card in the scanner and the scanner connected to a computer. You can refer to the instruction manual for more information on encryption. The folder icon is there to alert you when your memory card is full. It is easy to tell. The folder will turn red and say full. Going from left to right, the icons along the bottom are the battery. This one tells you how much battery power you have left. Color, this tells you whether you are scanning in color or black and white. The file format, this tells you whether you are saving your scanned item as a JPEG or a PDF file. And resolution, this one shows you the DPI, which stands for dots per inch. The options are 300, 600, and 1200 DPI. The more DPI you have, the higher the resolution. But the trade-off is that the higher DPI files will take up more space on the memory card. So for example, you can store 800 images per gigabyte at 300 DPI, but only 60 images per gigabyte at 1200 DPI. You can change the DPI by pressing the top button like that. And you can toggle the file format by pressing the bottom button. Going back and forth there. To change the encryption, color, and time date settings, hit the right button, which is the menu. The top and bottom buttons will allow you to navigate in the menu. And you can hit the center power button to select options. Now that we've had a chance to get more familiar with the icons, it's time to scan. This is the easy part. You simply adjust the size of the paper tray using the small gray piece located to the left of the scanner. Once you have it at the correct size, begin to feed your document in face up. Once the scanner recognizes that a document is being fed through, it'll automatically pull it through the scanner. 
You will see a preview of the document on the screen, at which point you know the scan has been successful and the photo is now saved on your memory card. Continue scanning until you have finished or have run out of room on your memory card. Once you have finished scanning all of your photos and documents, it is time to move them to your computer. For this, you will need to connect the scanner to your computer using the included USB cable. You should hear the noise that indicates something has been plugged into your computer. Open your file explorer and look for a new connected USB drive. Double click on this drive on the DCIM folder, and then finally on the 100 media folder. From here, you can see all of your photos and documents. You will need to move them from the micro SD card to your computer since the photo scanners are reset every time they are returned to the library. When it comes to digital media, remember the acronym LOCKS. Lots of copies keeps stuff safe. You should copy your files to additional storage, such as a flash drive or external hard drive, to keep them safe in the case of computer issues. And there you have it. You have now successfully digitized your important photos and documents. If you're interested in seeing photographs and documents from the Virginia Beach Princess Anne County Archives, check out VBPL's Digital Archives, which can be found under the Local History and Genealogy section of the library's website. And don't forget, you can check out this photo digitization kit from your local VBPL location with a library card. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content from VBPL to keep your mind evergreen. Thanks for watching.